Hello everybody and welcome back to the planetarium. My name is Jonathan and today I'm here to talk to you all about astronomy. Specifically, how astronomical objects can affect our daily lives here on the surface of the Earth. And we're going to do this by looking at a few specific objects in the sky and how they particularly influence our daily lives. Astronomy is the study of the moon, planets, stars, and everything else in outer space. So it seems kind of weird to think about how all of these distant objects can affect our day-to-day -day here on Earth. And by affect us, I of course don't mean horoscopes or astrology, which have no basis in science. I mean that these distant celestial objects have actual pull on daily life here on Earth. And the quickest way to see some of that pull is by simply looking to your closest body of water, which in my case is Lake Huron. Every day on the sandy beaches of this great lake, the water levels rise and fall. The tides ebb and flow like clockwork and the lake comes in and out, changing the shoreline in a significant way each time it does so. And this daily shifting of tides is caused predominantly by our moon, which is literally pulling the water towards it with its gravitational attraction. The moon's tug on the surface of the Earth is incredibly strong because of how much it weighs, and also because of how close it is to us. That's because gravity, while expressed by this equation, behaves in two key ways. The first of which is that the more mass an object has, the more gravitational influence it will also have. And second, that the closer two objects are to each other, the stronger their gravitational interaction will be. In the case of our moon, it weighs about one-sixth as much as Earth does, and it's located a measly 386,000 kilometers, or 240,000 miles away from the surface, which may sound like a lot, but it's actually really close for something as massive as the moon. This means that as the moon orbits around Earth, it has a rather significant pull on the Earth's surface. And water, being a liquid that makes up the majority of our surface, is especially susceptible to the moon's influence. And this is what causes our tides. As the moon passes overhead, the water is pulled towards it by its gravitational pull. This leads to a high tide, and when the moon is on the opposite side of the earth from us, it creates a low tide, as the water is being pulled towards the other side of the earth. This tide effect is distinctly different from waves, which are caused by weather phenomena like pressure or temperature. So, while the moon may still be too far away to drive to, it's still close enough to have an effect on Earth's surface. But the moon isn't the only body in our solar system that has an effect on our daily lives on the surface of the Earth. You might be surprised to actually know that the planets can affect us too. However, the one that probably has the most sway on natural processes here on Earth is Jupiter the mighty gas giant in our outer solar system, and the largest planet orbiting our sun. Jupiter affects our lives by acting as the shepherd of our solar system, constantly herding and moving around smaller objects like asteroids and comets. The planet's magnificent size and mass allows it to tug and pull on these smaller celestial bodies, regularly protecting us from impacts by space rocks of all sizes. One of the most recent examples of this effect was seen when the comet Shoemaker-Levy slammed into Jupiter's side in 1994. Jupiter's gravitational pull had been tugging the comet closer for years, but in 1994, the large comet finally succumbed to Jupiter's gravitational pull, and 
slamming into the side of the planet left massive visible scars across its atmosphere. These scars were so big that they could be seen from Earth, half a billion miles away. This has an impact on us because there are likely thousands, if not millions, of significant impacts that Jupiter has protected us from over the eons. Jupiter's shepherding affects us in other ways too, and not all of them have to be dangerous. For instance, Jupiter's gravitational pull on comets and asteroids is responsible for some of the most significant meteor showers that we can see from Earth. The best example of this is the Geminids meteor shower, the most active annual meteor shower here on Earth. This meteor shower is caused as the dusty trail left by an asteroid is pulled into Earth's orbit by Jupiter. And as our planet barrels through this dusty debris field, our gravitational pull sucks in tiny particles like a vacuum cleaner. Almost all of these particles in the debris field are tiny pebbles and dust grains that burn up in our atmosphere when the Earth plows into them. This creates the beautiful visual that is known as the Geminid meteor shower. While Jupiter's gravitational pull is impressive, it still pales in comparison to the largest object in our solar system, the Sun. Obviously, the Sun is what makes all life possible on Earth, but that giant fireball in the sky can do more than just keep the lights on. The ways that the Sun makes life possible are nearly too numerous to count, so instead of trying to list them all, Let's instead focus on what I think are less obvious impacts of the sun's rays. Let's start by looking at when the sun becomes too powerful for us here on Earth. Something that will be obvious for anyone who's ever got a sunburn before. Sunburns happen whenever our skin absorbs too much UV light from the sun. A type of highly powerful light, only slightly less dangerous than x-rays. When our skin comes in contact with UV rays, they end up dying off to prevent themselves from absorbing too much of it, leaving our skin tanner as a result. But even our body's natural defenses aren't always enough, and in rare cases, too much sunlight will actually lead to skin cancer. Yikes, it's crazy to think that the sun is so powerful that it can burn you from 93 million miles away. A prettier side to the sun's excessive light comes to us in the form of one of the most beautiful and sought-after astronomical phenomena, aurora. In the northern hemisphere, we call our aurora the aurora borealis. Uh, aurora borealis! Yes, that aurora. And in the southern hemisphere, they have the aurora australis, which is just their version of the northern lights. These aurorae are caused by the sun, but most specifically, solar storms on our star's surface. You see, solar storms happen when there is intense magnetic activity on the sun, and these powerful magnetic charges end up shooting extrasolar particles out into space, like a railgun. And while these particles aren't always directed at Earth, when they are, it can create the beautiful aurora that we all love. And on very rare occasions, these storms can be so powerful that they actually manage to overload and damage electronics here on Earth. One case of this actually happened back in 1859, where a very powerful solar storm temporarily shut down the world's telegraph system, which was then the most advanced electronics at the time. However, storms like this are very rare, and even if they did occur today, most modern electrical systems are designed to safely handle solar storms, so it's likely we'll only have a small blackout the next time one hits. Astronomy is one of the oldest studies on Earth. Our ancestors looked at the night sky and tried to use it to make predictions for ourselves here on the surface. And, in some respects, modern astronomy isn't much different. We're still looking up to the same sky, 
and using the same information we collect to improve our lives here on the surface. So, even if there aren't any supernovae or solar flares to be recorded, astronomy is still affecting our lives every day as we continue to learn more about ourselves and the universe we live in. All right, everybody. Thank you so very much for watching today. That concludes our video for this week. If you enjoyed the content you saw here today, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. That way, you can catch more of our content in the future when it's released. Until next time, though, keep your eyes on the stars.